Hi, this is Coach Joe Lucas, and welcome to this episode of the Magellan Network Show. Hey, I'm going to share with you today four key words or phrases that cost advisors millions of dollars in their career. But first, I want to make sure that you look at my special offer. I want to give you full access for 30 days to my new Magellan Network Coaching Program and Mastermind. So make sure you check that out uh, in a link or just go to Magellan network.net one word magellan network.net put your application in let me help you for the next 30 days so with that being said let's talk about let's talk about words and languaging and why it's so important that we get our arms around this not just as advisors but as human beings also our internal dialogue you know our self-talk has a lot of impact, has a lot of influence on our behaviors. And the challenge is most people, and here we're talking about you, an advisor, uh, are really not aware of this. And the reason why I say that is, when I'm doing an introductory call with a potential, with a potential client, or we're now into the uh, evaluation process, I am listening intently to how they're communicating, what words they're using, what phraseology they're using. Right? Because if they're talking to me, they're communicating to me that way, guess what? That's how they communicate to themselves. And so when I hear things like, well, Joe, I'd really like to make more money. I'd really like to get more organized. Um, you know, I, I, I'd really like to kind of get it to the next level. And, and I hear stuff like that, like, like, right? So the word like, you know, I'd like to. Like to is not committing anything. So in your brain, if you're sitting there, uh, saying to yourself and you're running your business plans, I really like to lose weight. I really like to get more referrals. I really like to get more organized. I really like to get more fee base. I really like to write more premium. Really like, really like, really like. Well, you have to recognize in our society today, and this is remember, our subconscious is a thousand times more powerful than our conscious. Okay. So what happens is that with all these inputs, right, social media, I mean, you can't go to the bathroom anymore without getting a message somewhere, right? It's like crazy. We have all these inputs, emails, texts, social media, TV, radio, stuff, all stuff, boom, 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 bombarding us. So what your brain does, what your subconscious does is filters, okay? And what it looks for are things that, you're, that you deem important. So if you're phrasing things like, I'd like to lose weight, I like to get to the gym more often, I like to like to, your brain goes, that's, that's not important, that's not a commitment, that's not a must. So we back burner it, right? So like to's never happen. And, and for some of you, when you do your goals and you're doing your business planning or you're just kind of framing what you want to do, that's why it doesn't happen. Because in essence, you're not committing to it internally. The next term, and like I said, there's four. The next term is try, T-R-Y, all right? Uh, I'm gonna try to lose weight. I'm gonna try to ask more, more, more referrals. I'm gonna try to get up earlier, right? Try, try, try. Try does not, I guess what Yoda says, don't try, do, or something like that in Star Wars. And you know, it's kind of funny at one regard, but it's so true. Because you must use the language of commitment. And the language is a four-letter word which will make you millions of dollars in your business, career, life. It will just give you so much more power. And that's the word must. M-U-S-T. If you start phrasing things like, I must get up by 5.30. I must go to the gym every day. I must ask for one referral a day. I must get more fee-based. I must, must, must. Right? Your brain goes, oh, priority. And subconsciously, you're more cognizant and you're more aware of it, right? So, so tries, must, we've got to get rid of that. That will not, I mean, excuse me, tries and like tos, we need to eliminate. You got to watch it. And there's probably another one which is should, right? So maybe there's five, you know, the evil five, right? Should, I should do better, I should, should, should. And again, same problem, which is, oh, not really a priority, your brain, right? So oh, that's, a, that's an option. Remember, the brain looks for things that have to happen and then things that are optional and things that are unimportant, okay? We need to always be in the have to happen box with our business, all right? So like to, try, should. Three right there. If you're thinking that way, if you're talking to yourself that way, 
If you're writing things down that way and you're wondering why you're not moving your needle because you're not, it, it, it's like you're putting the wrong gasoline in the tank and you wonder why the car doesn't go. Okay. So those are two things. So those are three things. And I just want you to be very cognizant of that. And can, I catch my clients all the time. Hey, what's going on today? Tell me about your last uh, couple weeks. And well, I try, I don't know. No. So talk, talk to me, right? Or when I review a business plan. Right, we do these really cool, and I know some of you are, are doing the audio, and, and that's cool. But you know, I have all my clients do a two-page quarterly game plan, and what we do is make sure. And when I review with my personal clients, I'm looking at the language. You know, are we do we have the language of commitment, right, or do we or do we have the language of complacency? Two different things. So I'm looking for those three elements, right? Then we get into the other two, right? More and better. Right? So, what are, what's the problem with those? They're not discernible, they're not measurable, they're not clear, and what happens is, so, typical scenario. Hey, I'm talking to an advisor, give me some of your goals, well, I'd like to make more money. And that's a, that never happened. Like to and more in the same sentence, you might as well not have said anything. All right, like to make more money. I'd like to get more referrals. Uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, have more assets, right? Like to more. And that's why a lot of you talk, by the way. You're just not, you've never been, until you've maybe heard me speak today about this, you've been totally unconscious. You're like, man, I never thought of that. I want you all to just be very aware of your community, internal dialogue, your ID, which is part of your operating system. It's a big part. For, for some of you, it's, it's, it's a major part. That, you know, we call it self-talk and that people get a little weirded about that. But it's so powerful. And like I've always said, you know, we're in the personal development business. We're in the mindset business. You know, the difference between somebody that does $10 million of revenue and $100,000 of revenue is their mindset, not their education. But if you're not aware of it, how can you change it, right? So more, not measurable, better, not measurable. A human being cannot take action if they are not clear on the objective, all right? So here's the way your brain works. Listen up. If you say, I want to get more referrals, your brain goes, okay, but it can't formulate how we're going to get that done because there's not a specific target. In essence, you're confusing yourself. And remember something, just like we talk about prospects, a, a confused prospect cannot say yes, a confused person cannot buy, a confused advisor cannot take action. And so what happens is you say, well, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to get more. And your brain says, okay, let's figure out how we're going to pull that off. And it's like, I can't figure out how to pull, pull off because you don't have all the elements of the formula. Where if you say, hey, you know, what I want to do is I want to drive four referrals a month, one a week, right? No longer the word more. Tangible. Your brain goes, okay, how are we going to pull that off? We got to get one a week. Well, I'm going to have to ask. Well, how many times am I going to have to ask, right? And your brain goes, well, maybe once or twice a day, right? And now, but I, now I've got a formula which I can take action on versus more, I, I can't equate that to anything. And the same thing with better. Better is the same scenario. I want to get John, I want to get better at X. Well, how do we quantify better? Is it one hundredth or one millionth of one percent? Does that, I want to have a better bank account. Well, here's a dollar, go get them. I mean, what are we looking to do here? So how better? How specifically better? Right? The word specifically is powerful because it forces you to take all this stuff and get it down to tangible, tangible scenarios. So I want you to say, okay, hey, I want to drive one referral a week. Okay, what must I do specifically? I must ask for referrals. How many times specifically is the standard, right? Now your brain, now you're working at a much higher level. You can formulate a game plan. And that's where a lot of, you know, it's interesting in, our, in, you know, in my career, I've seen a lot of bright people, men and women who are, who are very good at what they do. They care deeply about their clients. They're ethical. They're honest. And yet they're frustrated because they've, they've, hit a, they've hit a level and they cannot get out. And a lot of times it's because they're holding, the, it's like the language is chains that hold you down. And if you're not aware of it, and this is where the frustration comes, you don't know what to fix because you don't know what to look for, right? It's like it's like my car doesn't run. 
Well, why doesn't it run? I don't know. I can't figure it out. And you just put your hands up, right? Where you take it to the guy or the gal, right? And they plug it into computers these days. And here it comes out all the things that are wrong with it, right? It's diagnosed. Now we can go fix it. You have to diagnose what's holding you back. And remember, if we think about mindset, if you, if you, if any of you followed me for any length of time, you know I spent a lot of time talking mindset, but not in a a superlative way, but in a, a very tactical way, which is here are the elements, right? Our beliefs, right? What we believe we're capable of doing, what we deserve, right? Our values, what's important to us, and then how do we determine that? The rules, right? Our self-image, the man or woman in the mirror, and that'll be a topic for another another one of these. And our internal dialogue, the ID, right? Then, then there's a fifth element, which is how you define failure. But today, like I said, we're spending we're spending time in the ID box, the internal dialogue box. And if you're not conscious or cognizant of your internal dialogue, your self-talk, it is costing you millions of dollars. It has already cost you, depending on how long you've been here, it's cost you probably millions of dollars of business. And, you know, I made the statement the other day to somebody, and not because I was trying to be an ass about it, but I need to make a point. And this is somebody who's been in the business 20, 25 years. I said to him, I said, how long do you think you've been kind of wired the way you've been, like the more, better, try, should, you know, like that, and like to? And he says, Probably since rookie training, it's okay. Because here's a guy who cares deeply, um, and, and and he makes a good living. So let me be very clear. You know, it's not like he's failing, but this is the only profession I'm aware of that somebody can make you know 100 grand, 200 grand a year net, and they feel like they're failures. Right? It's kind of a weird dynamic. So topic for another time. And I said to I said so 20 years. What do you think? I mean, let's ballpark it. Yeah, because I, I and there's a reason why I'm asking him to do that. I said. What do you think it's cost you business-wise the last 20 years to just kind of not, and because it, it was like an epiphany for him. Like, I never thought of this. Like, holy crap, you're right. I phrased everything in tries and shoulds and like tos, and, and I kind of played safe, right? And that's the problem. If you're looking to, if you, you remember, when we get in this business, and some of you all under, will definitely understand this, what's the first goal when you get in this business? Survival making it through the crucible. And depending how old you are, the crucible will look one way, today it looks a little bit different, but it's still the same thing as the crucible, right? And it may take you a year, it may take you three years, it may take you five years, right? There's a, everybody's got their windows, right? But then you get to a place where, okay, I, I'm, I'm still kind of in a little survival scarcity mode, but I, I think I can make it now, right? I've kind of validated my existence here. But then if your brain is like, okay, whew, or when you get to a certain income level or a certain level of success, you're like, okay, you now go into a very dangerous place, the comfort zone. And when you're in the comfort zone, everything becomes a should. Everything becomes a better, everything becomes more. And when I talk to my clients who are chargers, right? And I don't mean the football team. I mean, they're out there, they're going 20% a year, 25% a year. Um, they're building empires. Their languaging is, I got to get this done. I must have this happen. I've got to figure this out. There's no ambiguity in their language. And they understand that they've got to stay uncomfortable. See, if your goal in life is to be about, Joe, I just want to live a comfortable life. I mean, then that's fine. I mean, I'm not knocking that. But then be at peace with it, right? Don't sit there and say, well, I want a comfortable life, but I want to do more. I want a comfortable life, but I want to double, triple my business. It will not happen. It just won't. Every successful person understands the rule of being uncomfortable. You're always running. You're always climbing. It's like the and, I, and this is the, the terminology that I use for myself, right? I've been doing this for 25 years. I'll be 55 this year. I made a declaration to my clients back in the back in February, which was my 25th anniversary of just coaching advisors. I said I will be here for another 25 years. That is my plan. Now, if that's God willing, obviously, but. I will be here. And then the, then the terminology I used or the visual I used was I am climbing the mountain. And what most people think is, well, you're, you're going to do this for 50 years. You're at, the, you're at the halfway point. So now you're at the peak and now you're going to come to the back, the, you know, the backside of your career. And I said, bullshit to that. 
I'm only halfway up the mountain. And my best day, the day that I'm going to look over at the peak and look at everything is my last day I coach. When I say that is it, it is my last day, that will be my best day as a coach. And I need all of you to that, adopt that same psychology. I don't care if you're 25 years old or you're 75 years old. You have 100% of your career left. And your best day in an advisor, your best day being who you are in this is your last day. Because if you have the psychology, like, oh my God, I, I took the, you know, I get people from all over age groups come and talk to me, and I'm like, I don't care how old you are. Your age has nothing to do with my whether I work with you or not. What I care about is your mindset of what you want to accomplish. You gotta, I gotta be excited for you. Because if, if I'm not excited for you, you know, I'm, it's gonna be boring. And who wants that? Your best day is your last day. Okay? And take that, watch your internal dialogue. And you can have great things happen for yourself. So don't forget, take me up on, if you like this, I'll give you lots more. Come, check it out, MagellanNetwork.net. Give me 30 days to transform what you're doing and who you are. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you again on our, the next episode of our Magellan Network show. So there you have it. If you really enjoyed watching this episode, Go ahead and subscribe to the Magellan Network Show with Coach Joe here on YouTube. And remember, I'm always here to help you become a better entrepreneur, business owner, and financial advisor. With that, I'll see you next time on the Magellan Network Show with me, Coach Joe. Take care and goodbye.